Hi, I'm Mark Nelson with GrowSafe, and I also will have with me today Kevin Garasino, also from GrowSafe. We're excited and thankful to be part of this Beef Improvement Federation program today and sincerely believe that we're bringing you a very useful and valuable topic uh, for discussion. Okay. Our topic today is three critical things you need to know about calculating growth curves using partial body weights. With our GrowSafe Beef in pen weighing system, we can collect partial body individual animal weights multiple times per day in an unintrusive live pen setting continuously every day, more accurately measuring average daily gain better than periodic shoot weights. And we can learn and apply so much more information as we do this as well. So a quick overview of GrowSafe. Most of you are familiar with this. We have a platform of livestock monitoring solutions impacting sustainability, efficiency, profitability. We're partnering globally with breeders, breed associations, feed yards, and academia to do so. So the slide on your right is very recently updated, but I'll tell you, every one of these numbers have grown since this slide was made. And I will say also that uh, while our US install team is staying very busy, we're seeing a lot of international activity. And the, um, the impact that we're having on the international beef herd and efficiency is, is really exciting. And the really nice thing also, we're talking about gross AP for in-pen weighing today. And most of our new installs also are including this technology. So the agenda for today, we're going to discuss that technology. Uh, I'll do that. And then I'll turn it over to Kevin and he'll go over uh, the data collection. And then I'll come back on and discuss some use cases based upon some of the information Kevin's given us. And then we'll both team up to answer any questions that are generated. So the technology, most of you are very well acquainted with our feed intake technology. Today, we're gonna to be focused on the deliverables and reasons for Grow Safe Beef our in-pen weighing system, which can be paired with our feed intake nodes to pair daily intake with daily weight gain or be installed and utilized independently. So this is the Grow Safe Beef. And as you can see, um, it has uh, two different positions in this case, and then two more positions on the other side. We find that a lot of our clients uh, can really utilize this technology best by putting it in a, around a water that's split by a pen uh, settings so that they can monitor two different sets of cattle on this technology at the same time. The uh, Grow Safe Beef consists of a weighing platform positioned in front of the water trough designed to collect partial body weights from animals tagged with half duplex tags, EID tags. And each time an animal visits the water trough, its unique EID tag is recorded along with partial body weight. This information feeds into the DAC panel, which you see uh, at the top of the picture. And uh, it pairs uh, the EID tag uh, read, which if you look inside of the, uh, the crate or the position, uh, the reader is at the point where the animal inserts its head while it drinks water. And this data is paired with the partial body weight that's collected from the load bars underneath the, uh, the scale that you see at the bottom of the grow safe beef. Next, we'll just show you a video that uh, would probably more simply show the way that a grow safe beef system works. This is a uh, client of ours that has grow safe beef. So you can see an animal stepping up and at that point we're weighing that front half of that animal. You can see what the animals see as they step in and the different parts of the system, the DAC panel, um, the uh, partial body weight scale at the bottom of the water trough. Here an animal is stepping up and you can see that when it's drinking that it's really in a rested, low stress position where we can accurately measure the animals. Here you can see the screen to the left where we're collecting all of the data. And once again, the animal's stepping up and drinking. So we can measure and monitor and predict and optimize uh, a lot of data using this piece of technology. Now I'd like to introduce Kevin Garasino, who is our lead data analyst. Uh, he'll take over control of the meeting and visit with you about uh, our data collection. Kevin? Thanks, Mark. My name is Kevin Garasino. I'm the lead data analyst at GrowSafe. And today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about data collection review, um, and especially GrowSafe Beef Continuous In-Pen Weighing System. And so basically what we want to look 
at how we can use this in-pen weighing system to accurately measure average daily gain in a shorter time period than traditional shoot weights. So currently, BIF requires that we have a minimum of 70 days between start and end shoot weights in order to accurately measure average daily gain. So some of those factors, which I'm sure you're aware of, you know, that affect those shoot weights are time of day, room and fill, um, other cattle pushing up against the shoot, and also proper calibration. So when was the last time that scale was calibrated with a known weight or even certified? Um, some other factors to take into account when we shoot weigh is it causes stress to the animal. It's also just a snapshot in time of that animal's weight. And it can also affect the animal's um, intake pattern or behavior. So one of the ways that we first looked at this was we looked at consecutive day weights for the same animals. So animals that have consecutive day shoot weights, so one right after the other, and we looked at 40,000 samples of these. And we found that about 54%, so over half of them, varied by about 10 pounds between the two days. So that's not too bad. And then we had another 25% that um, the variance was more than 20 pounds. 11% was 30 pounds, and we even had 5% that had a variance between consecutive days on shoot weights of 40 pounds, more than 40 pounds. So you have to think that if you weigh light on the, on the start weight and heavy on the end weight, is that really going to increase your average daily gain? Or conversely, if you're heavy at the start and light at the end, is you may actually have a negative average daily gain recorded or a decrease in average daily gain. So this is going to affect a lot of your parameters, such as feed conversion ratio, um, RFI, REDG, all of those feed efficiency um, parameters that we look at and, and use as benchmarks and, to, and for selection tools. So how do we get around this? So GrowSafe has, has used technology, as Mark was just demonstrating, where we get the weights of these animals every second that they're up there. So every time that the animal is on that gross safe beef weighing system is it reads that animal's tag. And this is a representation of one animal. So all of these red dots are actually this animal's weight recorded. And we can see the time frame on the bottom here. So basically it's a representation from about February, end of February to the end of April. And we can see a nice trend. If you were to draw a line through there, a regression line, is that would give you a nice consistent average daily gain. Now we do have some outliers, so this could have even been an animal, another animal also stepping on the scale at the same time, but GrowSafe software takes care of that. So we can really follow that animal's growth curve and get an accurate measure um, of that average daily gain. So just remember this slide for, for this next one I go in as well. So this is actually the same animal in the uncertainty of shoot weighing. So if we look, we have the time frame along the x-axis, we have the animal weight in kilograms, along the left Y and the intakes as fed along the right Y. The green bars are just this individual animal's daily intake. Gray bars are just days that the animal didn't show up or was out of the pen. And so those red dots that we looked at, this blue line is actually the regression line of those gross safe beef in pen weighing um, weights. So this is basically the animal's average daily gain. Now, if we look at the yellow X's at each end, those are actually shoot weights. And there's a yellow line, which is the regression of those shoot weights. So only based on those shoot weights or that average daily gain. So if you look at that shoot weight, is actually this animal lost weight during this trial. However, when you look at the gross of beef weight, this animal actually gained during the trial. And if we compare the two, we actually had a change in average daily gain of 2.5 pounds per day. So that's quite a difference in average daily gain. And this equated essentially to a difference in RFI of 1.6. And when you consider that most of our RFI values phenotypically are between about minus four and plus four, that's a big difference and can really change the ranking of this animal. Another uncertainty of shoot weighing or an example of um, some variability in the shoot weights is again, we have a different animal here. We have the feed intakes um, and then all of these yellow X's. So we have more shoot weights on this animal. All of these X, yellow X's are shoot weights. So we can see beginning of February, this shoot weight actually lay, lies way above the regression line. So it's likely a, a wrong shoot weight. So when we were analyzing it, we would omit that, but you have to be able to look at this regression. Another takeaway from this slide 
is if you we look at on the right hand side of the figure, if these two uh, consecutive day shoot weights to end, as we can see, there's quite a bit of difference. In fact, those two shoot weights differed by 100 pounds. So that's going to affect your average daily gain, daily gain quite a bit. So if we compare the average daily gain in RFI using either this one and compare it to if we were to use the lower um, end shoot weight, is again, we have a change in average daily gain of 1.3 pounds and a change in RFI of almost 1.5 pounds per day. So again, this is going to affect this animal ranking quite a bit. So that takes care of sort of some of the accuracy of gross weight beef compared to the, the um, uncertainty of the sheet weights. The other thing we wanted to look at is shortening this period of time um, in order to accurately measure average daily gain. So what we did is, is we took um, a trial, or we took trials, basically about uh, 2,000 animals from different trials, and we ran RFI on them and average daily gain, metabolic midweight, all of that, we recorded these parameters and over a 70 day period. And then we also looked at smaller time periods. So we went from 20 or from the start, 21 days, and recalculated all those parameters. And then we went from the start to 28 days and recalculated all those parameters again. And we essentially just did a correlation between these short time periods, so 21 start, 28, these weekly time periods, and then correlated it back to this full 70 day trial length. And we can see that about 21 days from the start is we were about 98.5% correlated with the midweight for these animals. And this curve increases as we go. Now right about here at about 49 days, so from the start 49 days in, as we see this curve starts to level out. And we're also at 99, you know, over 99% correlated um, with the actual full 70 day weight. Now on the right side of this figure is we also conversely went from the end and then in weekly increments, so 21 days back, so that three week period, and then 28, 35, and so on. And we essentially did the same thing, is correlated the midweight back to the midweight that we got from the um, measurement of these animals for a full 70 day trial. And again, so at 21 days, we're just under 99% correlated. And as we go up, we can see this curve, a nice straight line. And then about 49 days, we're over 99.5, and that starts to level out again. So this is why we proposed that we, should, we, should, we can accurately measure average daily gain, midweight, um, most factors needed for calculating efficiency traits based on 49 day, days when we're using the continuous in-pen weighing system from Grossley. Now, just down at the bottom right, and I highlighted these just so I don't forget them, but we have shoot. So what we did is, again, the midweight taken from the shoot, and we compared it to the midweight from that full 70 days of gross weight beef weights. And here we are actually still pretty good. We are at 95.5 correlation. And then the combination is just using the midweight from the shoot and the average daily gain um, from gross weight beef. But because this slide is dealing with midweight, that's why these two points are, um, are the same. So on this last slide, we basically took those time periods from the start, so 20, from the start to 21 days, or from the end 21 days in, and took those three week periods, four week periods, and just correlated them with each other to see where we were. And again, at 21 days, so whether it was 21 days you know, in or 21 days before the end, is we were over 95% correlated. And again, we can follow this curve, it nicely goes up, and then at about 49 days, it starts to level out again. We're at 98, you know, 985 correlation. So we're really highly correlated between that. Strengthening again this proposal that we, sh you know, we can accurately measure average daily gain in 49 days. So why would we want to do this? Well, we want to do this for a few reasons. Number one, it's going to reduce cost to producers, and also they can run more tests, so we can get more animals tested through this time. And with that, thank you for your time, and I'm going to hand this back to Mark to go through some use cases. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, yeah, next, uh, the, the third thing that we wanted to visit with you today was some potential use cases for gross egg beef. So there's uh, three different use cases we want to discuss. Uh, number one are seed stock applications, 
And as Kevin's already uh, initiated the topic of uh, an RFI standard 49 day versus 70 day using in pen weighing systems, we'll cover that a little bit more. Also, uh, touch on looking at establishing growth curves and weights through the GSB that could be of value and discuss what we're doing in the feed yard and also in pasture. Next slide, please, Kevin. The application or use we're going to talk about first is within seed stock and a shortened duration of RFI feed efficiency trials. As Kevin discussed, we have a standard trial with shoot weights utilizing 70 days of gain following a proper warm-up, of course. And he's shown nicely that the data that we can collect uh, continuously on a day-to-day -day basis on grow safe beef uh, is highly accurate in a 49-day period. This gives us an opportunity to run more trials per year, reducing costs. There's a big reduction of animal stress and labor. Uh, so in general, grow safe clients utilize the grow safe feed intake technology for measuring dry matter intake. Our analytics department, of which Kevin is the lead of, follows BIF recommendations for intake standards of 35 valid days after the proper warm-up period. This is the common standard that most breed associations and genetic companies follow. So many of our clients uh, test long enough to establish intake and utilize the grow safe analytics department to ensure any out days um, versus valid days are accounted for with integrity. Many of our clients also test not just for the intake I mentioned of 35 days, but also for intake in relation to gain. And most of the data that Kevin shared with you um, related to residual feed intake, which does that very thing. So for grow safe to calculate residual feed intake or RFI, when they utilize shoot weights, the grow safe analytics department requires two shoot weights on and off a 70 day test. When our clients have grow safe beef daily weights to measure average daily gain, as you saw in Kevin's portion of the presentation, the accuracy of any GSB data over 49 days and later is 99% correlated to shoot weights on average. On individual animals, there is data that certainly infers daily weights over 49 days can be even more accurate than shoot weights. So grow safe currently utilize GSB weights to measure gain for a 49 period after warmup. There are many benefits in, to this, including the client's ability uh, to collect more data on cattle as they run more trials per year on feed intake technology. Uh, the 35 days of valid intake typically can be completed within those 49 days, allowing for some clients who have typically tested just long enough to get intake data, now can also test for RFI or even RADG in about the same trial time as they're accustomed to utilizing feed intake nodes without GSB. And clearly there's less stress on the cattle, there's less interruption of intake due to processing, less labor cost. It uh, just creates a lot less intrusive way to collect data. So the impact of changing technology of, of feed efficiency trials. This slide shows uh, the BIF recommendations uh, of 35 days, which you can see that GrowSafe uh, also follows. And when you look at tests that use coupled feed intake and gain, such as RFI with shoot weights, uh, BIF recommends 70 days and GrowSafe obviously follows that as well. Um, the one difference that we have right now that uh, we really wanted to discuss today was the opportunities for our uh, for clients uh, to collect data or tests that uh, use coupled feed intake and gain uh, with continuous weighing systems, such as the Grow Safe Beef. And we're hoping that uh, that comes under discussion for the Beef Improvement Federation. Um, and clearly, the Grow Safe standard right now is 49 days. So, the, uh, the opportunities we have here uh, to test more cattle and to have uh, equal or even better quality data is re a real opportunity for the industry. We'd also like to discuss uh, for the seed stock business some future suggested uses with these continuous weights. Uh, we can look at growth curves and uh, also the opportunity to be a third party verified program. We can look at cow weights and 205 and 365 day weights. The, the graph on the left doesn't have any real data to it, but as you can imagine, uh, each line being an individual animal, starting at about the same weight and ending up at about the same weight. There's a lot of variations in between that can be applicable data of value. 
So there's a lot of opportunities for improved weight and average daily gain measurement to be used in genetic selection. Some animals get to the same point as contemporaries but get there faster. Some start slower to pass up their contemporaries. Some just plain gain uh, maturity faster and quit gaining sooner than others. Um, and you look at this, there's both possibilities that have uh, potential benefits from this and even a less desired result in most cases. And within each breed, there are variations in growth curve, rate of gain, and age when skeletal growth is complete. The industry could benefit by selecting specific genetics with growth curve differences to target optimal endpoints. This would be much more desirable to knowingly select for bloodlines when selecting for bulls with more consistent weights to sell as feeders, and also for feed yards to source lightweight calves who will also finish closer to the same time. If you have a preferred marketing endpoint, it would certainly be more beneficial to design your matings for a year-round supply of cattle, which have all been managed the same for consistency, than instead possibly moving calving dates around into some less optimal weather to meet some endpoints. As I mentioned, uh, these weights are also a third party uh, opportunity. There's a lot of benefits from that. If you look at some of the scale weights out there that uh, are on scales that usually are not certified, and uh, oftentimes not calibrated. Um, the grow safe beef uh, really eliminates any of those concerns. And also all animals on trial, when you do a grow safe beef trial are represented, uh, unless the data would show that an animal should be excluded because of illness or something like that. Um, so all animals are there every time and animals going on trial before the data is collected and attributed to an animal so that it's a, it's a really nice third party uh, benefit to, to make sure that all data is there. We also have the opportunity to use the Grow Safe Beef to collect cow weights uh, for breed associations, uh, which is very meaningful. Uh, we could also look at collecting 205 day weights taken exactly at 205 days of age, or 365 day weights taken exactly at 365 days of age with no need for adjusted weights. We could also envision collecting uh, not just the daily weights, but uh, we could put the weights into categories and, and have animals recorded with their association to show what an animal weighed at 205, 245, 285 days, 325 days, uh, up to 365 days, and even do that after uh, the yearling weights and collect weights again 40 days later at 405 and another 40 after that at 445. So we could get a real look and how an animal is gaining as it matures. And then uh, another point that we could actually pull together is uh, if we looked at the cow weights combined with the percent calf wean weights. So there's a lot of uh, future suggested uses that we would have for grow safe beef and, and daily weights as well. We also have grow safe beef in feed yards. And uh, in the feed lot, there's a lot of applications you can imagine. Um, where we're monitoring continually continual performance. So we can uh, monitor individual animals to make database decisions based upon their performance. We can manage uh, variation by the individual animal and also by the pen. We can look at the nutrition of individual animals and access rations and, and performance insights. We can monitor the well being of animals and we can have early detection of behavior changes. And uh, labor optimization can also be big. Uh, we've got the, uh, the, the, the paint spray on the, the gross AP where we can market cattle uh, based upon if they've uh, been sprayed or not. And uh, we can also mark animals if they have health flags so that uh, they can be easily be pulled by the uh, feed yard cowboys. And there's also a, a lot of applications we can look in marketing um, using the gross AP. Another thing that we're looking at uh, for grow safe beef is deploying these and utilizing these on pasture. There's uh, definitely some emerging technology for growth management and monitoring on pasture. And we've got some activities, uh, some research collaborations with the Noble Research Institute, West Virginia University, and also o Old College as well. So we're very excited about the applications of get catching daily weights on pasture as well. So in summary today, We'd, uh, we hope that we've accomplished our three objectives of number one, um, helping you to understand how the grow safe beef uh, daily uh, weights technology works. 
And Kevin went through and discussed uh, what the grow safe beef data is really telling us. Um, and the takeaways from that uh, were that uh, continuous weighing with grow safe beef is really accurate and precise. And that 49 days of continued weighing on grow safe beef provides the equivalent average daily gain to 70 days with shoot weights. And that also that there is a high level of uncertainty in shoot weights versus continuous weighing. And lastly, the, the topic that I just finished with is uh, the review of some various uses of continuous way. We'd now entertain any questions that uh, you may have from our presentation. State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. <laughs> 